In this tutorial, I want to show you a way in which we can enter data into a shapefile directly rather than joining data from another table or um, some sort of XY data that we spatially join. Sometimes we might want to just enter numbers manually. Um, so what I've done here to illustrate that is I've already added in the state's uh, shapefile. Now technically, this isn't a shapefile. It's in this SDC format. Um, it's not important what SDC stands for, but it's it's not technically a shapefile, and shapefiles are actually a friendlier format for this. So if you, if you are operating with an SDC format, then what you want to do is translate it into a shapefile. And it's a very simple rule, just like we've done with baking census data and other things, we just export it on itself. Just right click, data, export data, and save it where you want to save it to. I'm going to call this states.shp. Add that in, and I'm going to get rid of the old one. Okay, so now we're working with a, a, a true shape file here. Um, and again, what we want to do is, if I open up the attribute tables, I want to be able to add uh, additional variables that I can just input data directly. Um, the first thing we might want to do is actually create a column for that new variable. And so we're going to add a field here. And one thing I like to do is be able to just replicate the, in this case, the state name. So I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth, so I'm going to call this uh, state name 2. And for these, we want to make sure that they're just text, and that's fine. Hit OK. And you can see that it added here. I'm going to just do a left click on state name 2 to highlight the whole column, and then I'm going to right click and we're going to do a field calculator to fill it in. So state name 2 right here equals what? Well, equals state name, so we'll just double click to add that and hit OK. And it might take just a few seconds to uh, accomplish that task. Um, you can see we're chugging away here. And while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to hit, oh, here we go. I was going to hit pause, but... Oh, okay, very slowly we've accomplished our task. So now what we might want to do is go ahead and um, just add another field, and I'm just going to call this made up because I'm just going to make up some numbers. Now, if you're going to enter a 0 or 1, a short integer is fine. I usually just suggest if it's going to be a, a number of varying size, just go with float. Um, so we're going to set that to float, and just hit OK. Again, you can see that we're over here. Now, notice that I can't, I'm trying to type in new numbers here, and I can't. So what we need to do is, I'm going to close this real quick. We need to go to our editor and turn on Start Editing. Now, if you don't see this somewhere on your menu, um, you're going to have to go up here and see where we're at here. Um, customize Toolbars, and you're going to have to make sure that Editor is checked. Okay. So again, if you don't see the Editor Toolbar, and it looks like this, typically you're just looking for Editor in a drop-down. But if you don't see that, again, it's Customize toolbars and make sure that editor is checked. Okay, once you have that, you can start editing. And then I'll just right click and open up the attribute table again. Scroll across. And let's for Hawaii, let's give them a 7. Washington a 13, Montana a 2, Maine a 4, and so on. So this is how we can um, enter data directly. And then when you're done, you just close the window. And we can stop editing at that point. And yes, we'll save our edits. So now we can actually, I'll just go in here, fun, and we can shade by our made up numbers. Obviously, they're going to be heavily skewed towards zero because they didn't fill in most of them. So there you go. So that's how we can enter data directly. Hope that is helpful.